Hey everybody, welcome to my tutorial on quick and easy vacuform brick painting. Um, this is a very easy way of painting brick, if you've ever painted it. Uh, take over a few materials that you'll need first. Obviously the first is a scenic base, so any wall flat or uh, type of flat surface that you're adhering your vacuform to. You'll also need vacuform. I, I like to use sketchlight.com. Uh, paint colors as far as three brick colors, a black, a white, a raw umber, hunter green. You'll need a small roller and a pan, a garden sprayer, and some cheesecloth. To start out, what I do, um, this is provided you have your scene built and your vacuum form is adhered. I just staple it. Um, Sketchlight has some great different vacuum form products. Uh, this is just going to be the basic brick B pattern on their website. Um, here I'm just taking the garden sprayer. You can see I have the two green, or the two uh, watered down paint colors. The first is the hunter green that's watered down. A tip that I use for when using watered down colors is if you dip your finger in the paint, when you pull it out you want to still see some skin tone through the paint on your finger. I don't do that here, I just manage to spill a lot. <laughs> um, but you'll see that when I get into the raw umber. So hopefully you're better at pouring that than I. Um, my wrist is a little unstable as you can see. Um, then I just take this to the sink and rinse it off real nice. And cap this up. This is just a home uh, garden sprayer that I got from Home Depot, I think, for four bucks. Um, so here is the start of it already. My battery went dead, I had to run and charge it. Uh, but you can see the white vacuum form. It comes in white. This is all single sheets that we've pieced together, so it looks pretty good. I start by going around all the edges of the pieces and then going in the center. Now there really is no rhyme or reason. I just the, this this process is just to give variation in the coloring of your grout. So we're not painting the grout. That's what's so great about this is this vacuum form comes white, and as long as you want your grout white, you don't have to do anything there. That's what the quick and easy part comes in. Now it really is going to depend upon what or how much um, texture and variation you want in your grout. If you want your grout to pop, obviously you won't be painting it as much as I have. Um, but in this case, I wanted a nice, really dark, dirty brick uh, with lots of layers of coloring and dimension. So you'll see I just keep going back into the green and adding some more. Unless I took a break, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> Um, I think right now I'm actually spraying the top, it's just out of camera's range. Yep, here it is. Okay, so with, what's nice with these paint sprayers is you can really spray you know, quite a distance if you get it pumped up nice and good. This is also a great project for any non-artistic person, actually. You don't have to think about this. The only thing you really want to make sure is that, like you can see around the doorway and other things like that, that you spray that there. Um, here I'm mixing the raw umber color, or it's just, you want like a really light caramely color. Um, this was a little too bright for me, there's my finger test. Um, and a little bit too runny, so I went ahead, I had a stash of uh, some brown watered down, it looks white here until I stir it up. But once you get that mixed up nice, I just mixed it in with that color. You, you want two tone, so right, you could do one, but it's just going to look better for that grout line if you have just sort of uh, a darker green and then I like a lighter sort of brown, orangey, rusty sort of raw umbery color. So just dump that right in there. You can't be afraid of mixing the paint either. Um, that's where everybody goes wrong. Um, it's nice to have a little sketch pad or something next next to you that if you want to test it you can put a little smear on the paper to see what it looks like when it dries uh, but in this case it's just an under layer so it doesn't really matter I'm taking my cheesecloth and hopefully I do a better job pouring this time let's see Ooh. hey not so bad um, pour it right into your garden sprayer this I just rinsed out the green so you can keep reusing that garden sprayer provided you keep it clean 
Um, these garden sprayers that I got at Home Depot are nice because you can spray them at any angle. Um, and like I said, I think they're around $4. Pop the lid right back on there. Um, another tip for the garden sprayer is before you pour anything in, just have a small layer of water on the bottom. It's going to it's gonna stop any paint clogs that you might have um, that drop in. Even though you have that cheesecloth, if it, there's some thicker paint coming through, then, then you catch it. So now I'm just going over the, the white space, leaving white space, but just want to get some colorization in there. It's my father-in-law approving of my spraying. <laughs> and you want to make sure that you don't wait for the green to dry because you'll see that these two colors sort of mesh together and become a muddled third color um, that you get on accident, but it's, it ends up looking quite cool. So leave some white space, but go ahead and um, spray around in the white areas. Um, you can focus on a line, so it looks like that you know the the grout in that one area. Maybe there's a crack or something that is causing it to be a little bit darker. And we'll speed it up here so you can see the final. So let's go speed it up. The magic of television. Here we go. So your next step is going to be wait for that to dry and get your three brick colors. Now these are the colors that I chose. Um, you're going to want a bright, a dark, and a light. And really all that you do is take your three colors with one roller. So the same roller. Again, this could be a project for anybody. You don't need artistic ability. Um, the biggest thing to know is just don't go in a pattern. So just keep swapping between your colors. So you see I started with the light, went to the dark, and now here I go with the bright. These rollers, extended rollers, are great because um, you can get you don't need a ladder. Um, also, don't use a normal, a normal roller. You want something that's a little bit smaller. The bigger rollers I find don't get into the grout enough, and it looks too flat on the surface. Where these smaller, um, thinner rollers can actually get a little bit into the grout lines, so it gives it some 3D dimension, so you don't have to go in and paint. And remember, the biggest thing here is not to go in a pattern. So I tend to keep my darks, try to keep your darks on the outside um, where you might want some wear and tear looks. If you know you're going to be hanging um, hanging light fixtures or try to plan that out, make those areas a little bit darker, you could just paint one or two bricks dark. Um, you'll see when we come back that you, know, you can always come back and recolor your bricks as well. Um, but here, I just like to go to town mix mix the colors again don't get different rollers for each color um, because you're using these three colors but they're all going to sort of blend and mix together to create all sorts of varied colored bricks which turns out to look the best so hurry up look how fast i'm painting um, hurry up and finish this wall here and then we'll go on to the next step which is going to be getting the same sort of watered down mixture with the finger test as you did with the with the green and the goldy umber color uh, but this is going to be a black so you can see how I do this 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 t requires some artistic ability um, because you have to have an eye on where you're going to want the darkest part of your bricks here I tend to choose over the green again um, around any edges around windows where something might be um, if you're wondering why I'm going in a straight line, it's when it dries, it tends to look like that's maybe again where there's a crack in the brick, um, and you know something is seeping out of it. Um, so it looks, it gives it some nice imperfections. This is also great to hide any imperfections you have when constructing your vacuum form. So if there's a seam that you don't like, it don't worry about it when you're putting it up because you can cover it with the paint and make it look as if it were supposed to be how it is. Uh, so the places where I choose is where you can tell sort of where the seams of the vacuum form are. I'm trying to mask them to make it look more natural. After you do the black, I didn't film it because I had run out of battery, but you can see on the wall to the right, 
you do the same thing with a white paint. So you'd mix the white watered down paint um, with the finger test, make sure you can see your skin through it. You want it like a watered down milk and spray it randomly as you do the black here. And this is going to be a personal preference thing. If you want it darker, more grungier, you're going to add more. Um, I'm just trying to match the other walls here. Um, so it depends upon your scene and your lighting. If you're, if you're doing this in a haunt, then you probably want to do it in scene lighting. Um, otherwise, here in the theater, you know, there's going to be bright sh lights shining it on, it on it anyway. So here's the finished product. This is what it's going to look like with the white in there as well. A nice angled view. This is next week's episode. Um, it's going to be how to make these uh, factory windows. So make sure you rate, comment, and subscribe. Or check out my website, ericjamesdesign.com. Or on Facebook, facebook.com, ericjamesdesign. Thanks a lot, guys, and make sure you rate, comment, subscribe, let me know what you want to see, and I'll be working on some new videos soon. Thanks.